Well, good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael Romali here with the Hurricane Season 2020 update, part of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for August 21st, 2020, recorded around 4 p.m. Eastern Time. Well, Tropical Storm Laura remains a tropical storm with tropical storm warnings in effect for most of the Northern Antilles, as well as uh, obviously St. Croix and Puerto Rico through Hispaniola in the Dominican Republic under tropical storm warnings with tropical storm watches out here in three portions of the Turks and Caicos. Now, there's a couple of uh, interesting things that have gone on today. First of all, the models, the model guidance have shifted further off towards the west with that. And again, they've also gone further south. But as I'm about to show you, there's a lot of caveats to this forecast. So again, basically anywhere from Florida all the way over through Louisiana needs to be paying close attention to the progress of Tropical Storm Laura as there's a lot of things that we are going to be focusing on here uh, over the next several days. First and foremost, here's what's going on here on the visible satellite courtesy of tropicaltippets.com. And you can really see that this area right in through here is probably our old low level center in here. Our old uh, you know, center that became that that was responsible for the upgrade to Laura for the tropical storm is probably now racing ahead and actually decoupled. This is probably your mid level center in here, and you know, there's banding to it, and that's one of the signs that this is trying to work down uh, closer to the surface. And it is possible that we get yet another center reformation off towards the south and east of the other previous low-level center. This area is likely decoupling and moving away. This might become our new established center. Now, this is obviously a lot better than over in this general vicinity. This is a lot further off towards the east, but it's also a lot further south. A center reformation here would likely slow down the timing a little bit, number one. But number two, it gives it a better chance of just kind of skirting ever so north of the islands here, of especially Puerto Rico and St. Croix. And that's very important because if this can avoid land, this has the potential to end up in a more favorable environment because you remember going down here or track right over, you know, Hispaniola and the Dominican Republic, and continue moving westward basically but this could translate just ever so slightly to the north of the islands and that has a big uh, factor in the intensity and the track forecast both respectively uh, so again we'll be watching because this is a very interesting feature where our older decoupling and decaying center is roughly in through here moving almost due west so that's the old center. This is likely where our new center is going to form unless we get a lot of deep convection to form around in this vicinity. Uh, but right now, it all seems to want to be concentrating in that area. And that will likely help to induce yet another center reformation uh, with time. So this will be something that we're going to have to watch here. Uh, this is courtesy of uh, the Tropical Atlantic website, but the Gulfstream aircraft, the high altitude reconnaissance aircraft, is flying in uh, and around uh, Laura today. It actually just left Lakeland. It's now positioned towards the north and east of uh, San Juan, Puerto Rico. And uh, that will be moving in and around, um, obviously, our little system. And uh, that will be assimilated. Uh, into the zero Z model data. Some of this data will be assimilated into the zero Z guidance tonight, and that should give us a better idea of what's going to happen, but it does not tell us everything, and that's the most important thing. Now, from a structural standpoint here on the vorticity product, this is the 850 millibar relative vorticity. This has been in the atmosphere about 5,000 feet off the ground. These reds and whites at your higher cyclonic spin with height. And you can see that this is a more rounded ball of energy today uh, than it has been in previous days and even hours. Uh, it's a lot better organized. And that has uh, pretty significant implications going forward because if this manages to kind of skirt north of the Lesser Antilles and north of Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, and Cuba, it could have a slightly more favorable environment out in this vicinity 
for it to work within. And that is going to be something that we're really going to have to monitor is does this have that extra oomph, basically, that extra, you know, energy to really get going out here if it stays well away from land and in the Bahamas and Turks and Caicos, does that have a better chance to undergo, excuse me, to undergo more significant development at that time? It is certainly possible and it's not out of the realm of possibility. We can see this illustrated here on the 12Z H Wharf model. This is the, uh, again, the Hurricane Weather Research and Forecast model specific for tropical cyclones, specific for tropical cyclones and not global scale. So this gets a higher resolution. Now we'll kind of paint this forward a little bit, right? This is probably our old low level sensor in here, right? So this is the H wharf out at about 15 hours or roughly very early tomorrow morning. You notice pressures of about 1009, you've got some tropical storm force winds in here, maybe evidence of another low level center that's kind of decaying in through here and a new center that's somewhere roughly in through here, right? This area is pretty elongated. You can tell from the wind barbs, it's not a very co uh, coercive or coherent circulation. It's not a cohesive circulation and thus, um, there's a lot of discrepancy and this is very subject because the circulation itself is not very strong and it's not very well organized this will jump around different places from south to north to west to east to whatever this has the opportunity to change direction relatively quickly meaning it can flip and flop around and relocate and we'd see that happening several times here on the H wharf uh, that this is, you know, later tomorrow and again, you know, 15 Zulu time, you know, this is 1008 millibars approaching Puerto Rico, but watch what happens in the next frame. Boom. It jumps from being down here to a new center right here, maybe an older center in through here. And you can kind of just see how it, it kind of, you know, jumps these centers from time to time. It really seems to jump those centers and that's a problem because then you can see boom right there a thousand one millibars approaching uh hispaniola but you notice what ends up happening is it starts to strengthen into a stronger tropical cyclone stronger tropical storm and it misses the islands and it's now approaching the turks and caicos in, in the bahamas and through here that is a very real possibility that the H wharf is showing and you know going in discussions today with a couple of other people um you know this has the possibility to jump around and this center reformation if it does occur is going to be partially responsible in doing that so there is always that opportunity that what we might be ended up seeing is a center somewhere in this vicinity moving either right over Puerto Rico or just north of Puerto Rico and, uh, you know, kind of missing those land masses. That is a very real possibility and that puts more land, uh, land masses down the road at a greater chance of seeing a, a stronger tropical system moving into the Bahamas. It is not out of the realm of possibilities. Now, we're only going to go out to hour 51 here on the H wharf because you know, if you guys seen it, you know what it does. And quite frankly, you know, um, you know, we're, we're not going to, you know, mess with that. But this is a very real possibility. And it's something we're going to really have to watch here. Now, what's interesting is the GFS forecast model. This is basically the, the, the GFS, the 850 millibar vorticity product, the same one that we were looking at not too long ago, but it's different colors and this is now a forecast rather than the analysis. And this is what, um, obviously, that is our tropical storm out there, tropical storm Laura. Uh, out there by roughly about 8 o'clock tonight, and that's uh, Tropical Depression 14, which we've got interesting things going on with that. We'll talk about that here in a moment. Um, but the GFS model does almost exactly what the H wharf does. And if, if you know the H wharf, it brings it over uh, these areas in through Key West. The GFS also does the same thing. 
in the vorticity product. It's just not as strong as the H wharf, not even close. And then 14 goes there. And first of all, that's kind of not what we're seeing already, but whatever. Um, so that's interesting. And it adds a little bit of validity potentially uh, for the possible fact that this is going to kind of crawl up here. If it does manage in a more favorable environment, uh, and I'm telling you, you know, and this isn't a hyper scare, but Florida is not out of the, you know, it's, it's not in the clear, okay? Just because the cone and all of the model guidance says, you know, mostly, okay, we're not coming to Florida. Well, guess what? Those models, not the, especially the statistical models cannot see center reformations. They just can't do it. And that they're not programmed for that. They go on one certain center fix, and then that's where they initialize, and that's where the vortex, quote unquote, is. And it's given an initial motion, given initial, uh, you know, vectors and all that. And that's just how the modeling works. The stuff like the H wharf and H mon, those can depict a center reformation. The global models, not so much because they're a higher resolution. They can't get that scale per se. So it really leaves me to wonder whether or not these models are going to flop back all over to the east, closer to Florida and the Gulf Coast um, with the upper level reconnaissance data in them tonight at zero Z. That is going to be worth watching, I think, for its own right, because right now we're seeing that things are not lining up with what some of the models are already forecasting and predicting, right? So it's a very interesting thing, and while the h wharf might be on target about its track, the intensity, obviously, I, I'm not going to even go beyond what it's even saying, but we've got to watch this, you know, because it has very real uh, consequences down the road for, you know, Florida and the Gulf Coast states. And we can see that in the GFS forecast uh, out here, the 500 millibar geopotential height, this is basically your strengthening, your strength of the ridge at about 5,000 feet or not 5,000, 18,400 feet in the atmosphere. And that is Laura right there. And you just notice that it, it, you know, the GFS, for what it's worth, builds this very strong ridge in. And it so it's not going to be able to come up and turn out like that or come up straight up the peninsula or whatever. It's forced to basically go west. But a stronger storm will go further north uh, because it, it will get, you know, a more poleward advection. That's just something to keep in, uh, keep in mind. As time progresses, because I'm telling you, you know, if you're saying that Florida's not going to have any impacts, you know, you you better know because there's a very real possibility that there may be. So do not take your guard off of this system just yet. If you live in, in the Turks and Caicos, Bahamas, and Florida, and especially if you live in the Gulf Coast, you need to be watching this carefully. Now, on a tropical depression 14, real quick, sustained winds of about uh, 30 knots or 40 or roughly about 35 miles per hour. Moving northwest here at about 14 miles per hour, expected to become a hurricane uh, before reaching the um, Texas coastline here. Now, tell me if my eyes are playing games on me or you see something that I'm seeing. You see this, that's our circulation. It looks to be almost going due north. Now, that's interesting. Obviously, uh, you know, with Recon is heading in there now. That's great. But it almost got confirmed from the previous Recon that was in there. And you can see this is the first center pass, and that's the second due east-northeast, or northeast. Um, Yeah, that's a little bit interesting, right? And then you see this, and you say, whoa, wait a minute. That almost looks like a more of a due north path than it does northwest. A northwest heading would look something more like that. 
then it does that. So it's curious and I'll be watching it. Obviously, the more it moves in the short term further to the north is the less chance it has for significant land interaction to, uh, you know, the Yucatan Peninsula because the northern part of the Yucatan Peninsula is very uh, flat. It is not a significant train uh, landmass uh, as it is further to the south. And that is something to kind of keep in mind that that is going to be and in, in come into play here because if this continues to move further north, it has a much higher likelihood of missing uh, the more significant land masses or if it, indeed it could just move straight through the channel there and not even impact land at all. Now, that, you know, remains to be a very far-fetched idea, but, uh, you know, these trends that we're seeing in both systems are a little interesting to say the very least now real quickly here this is the gfs forecast the 850 millibar uh, vorticity again and just for quick reference you can see that our system comes through the yucatan it kind of pinwheels right around this almost larger almost like gyre ish type uh, helps to kind of crank this around and turn it back off towards the northwest makes landfall in the Yucatan then eventually heads into south uh, Texas area and that is a possibility but we'll have to wait and see and real quickly though that shear is going to remain an issue at least uh, for a little while longer before it kind of retrogrades then you start to see the potential for a uh, potentially for an anti-cyclone to develop over top of it but again that remains to be seen at this time so there is going to be a lot to watch and again these two systems are going to be very important to track down here over the next few days and again there's going to be a lot to watch here with Tropical Depression 14 and Tropical Storm Laura. Regardless, impacts remain the same right now, especially for Laura. Tropical Storm Forest conditions uh, likely for the Northern Antilles, St. Croix, and Puerto Rico over the next few days. All right, that's going to be it from me for right now. I, will, of course, will be back with another video update tomorrow or later tonight if deemed necessary. But that is going to do it for me this afternoon. Hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again either later tonight or early tomorrow morning. Stay safe, everyone. Have a great day.